I think it is important for us to also learn how to evolve your art into business. to my channel if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then click the subscribe button and join the revolution so that you do not miss out on any amazing interviews or on any other of my amazing content so guys we are back with another black excellence series a video and as you know as we always do we're gonna hop straight into it let's can you tell us about yourself who are you where do you come from what do you do I am uh, Frederick Kanyani Chabalala, popular known as DJ Kanyani. I was born and bred in Maryland in Soweto. Uh, I'm a DJ and also a music producer. So you mentioned that you are a DJ. Of course, you're a DJ. Everyone knows DJ <laughs> Kanyani. We know your songs. We dance to them. So, but can you explain to us what led you down the path of becoming a DJ? How did you know that this was your calling? Me being a DJ is not something that I planned. Uh, I think it was more of a calling. Mm. Um, I never imagined myself being a DJ. You know, I always imagine myself you know in an office space you know wearing my suit and right. tie, you know, <laughs> in an executive case you know i think in 1986 if i'm not mistaken i hope i'm not exposing my age here <laughs> uh, in, in 1986 in Houting, especially in Soweto, we never wrote our final exams mm. so my mom my mom wanted me to to achieve you know, especially in the field of education right so she decided to take me to a boarding school in Kiali. Uh, she went to high school. Mm -hmm. When I was there, uh, I met up with this friend of mine. His name is Lloyd. Uh, he's from Tembisa. Uh, he's now popular known as Dos Santos. They were playing this kind of music that um, I like so much. Uh, because of me being shy, I was a bit you know, scared to join them. Right. So I also had a collection. I also had my own collection of funk and R&B music, which Lloyd happened to like. You mm -hmm. know? But Lloyd, was, Lloyd is a very outspoken guy. So he's not sad. So he approached me, say, hey, man, I like the stuff you're playing. And I said, hey, I also like the stuff that you're playing. And then we exchanged. Mm. And then um, in the process, school holidays, you go back home, you know. Yeah. So when I came back home, I couldn't wait, you know, to share the music that I got from Lloyd with my friends in Soweto. Mm. So what would happen is when I do my garden at home, uh, I would check out one speaker. You know, back, the, back in those olden days, you know, that is how we used to do our garden. When you do your garden, you take out one speak and we play music. <laughs> right. So that is what was happening. And then I played music, not being aware that uh, my neighbors were also listening. Mm. And uh, one of the neighbors had a stock fell. He came to me and he said, hey, Kanyani, you know, every time you do your garden or whatever, I hear you playing this music that I like, you know, and I'm going to have a stock fell. Uh, can you come entertain my people? Mm. We agreed and that um, he will pay me 30 bucks a day. But I didn't have a sound system. I had the music, but I didn't have the sound system. Right. So I had to steal my uncle's sound system. I stole my uncle's house because he sleeps early. Uh, I think I played Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Stockfall members were, you know, um, happy. They were excited with the, the music that I played. Mm. And they also wanted me to come and play at their Stockfalls as well. Mm. And some of them were taxi owners, and some of them were shipping owners. Some of them wanted the music for their taxis. Some of them wanted the music for their shippings and taverns, you mm. know. So that's how it came about. Then I never looked back, you know. And from one member, from one Stockfell member to another, and I started, you know, building a name for myself. Mm. But the good thing is, I never had any pressure because if I wasn't looking at becoming popular or right. famous, do you understand? Yeah. So I was just doing it, you know, uh, because of the love, the love of the music. Realizing there was an opportunity to make more money especially with the taverners uh, and the taxis as well. Mm. So I started reproducing, you know, I bought empty cassettes and I started, you know, recording and I went to them now. Uh, I didn't wait for them to place orders. Right. I went to taxi ranks, you know, selling all these tapes and then that's how it came about. And then now we started hearing people talking about Ganyani, Ganyani, Ganyani. That's okay. how it came about. Yeah. Wow. So in your career then as a DJ, um, what are some mistakes that you've made? Or shall I say, what is one of the greatest mistakes you've made and how did you learn from it? I think I became more comfortable, you know, in the DJing space and never 
thought of you know growing myself or evolving myself as a business person i think it is important for us to also learn how to evolve your art into business those are the kind of mistakes that i do not regret having made because we, we learn from our mistakes we must not uh, dwell on them mm. we must just uh, try and accept and move on mm. because of the mistakes that you make are the ones that shape us into what we are today right that's yeah. true what differentiates you from other djs what makes people pick dj ganyani over someone else i'm original mm. you know i believe in my craft even though i do take advice from other people but i am always original mm. i think that's what makes me different and that's what you know keeps me grounded mm. what are some skills that you actually had to develop coming into the field that you're in dealing with different characters mm. yes dealing that one is important uh, there are those people who are always going to give you problems right because of you being in a public space you also need to have that skill on how to handle them mm. to understand what is something that you wish you knew about the industry that you're in before you started something you had to learn the hard way i think um because of uh, me having learned the art mm. of djing and music you know in the street i felt if um, i had an opportunity i would have gone you know to school and studied music mm. yes uh, i think that there are still a couple of things, you know, that one needs to learn, you know, like a, a formal education in music. Mm. Yes. It's interesting because, you know, um, in today's times, a lot of people believe that, you know, you don't need education for things like this, um, f to go into music and, and you know, it's, it, it's about the passion and the skill. What do you say about that? You do need. Talent alone is not enough. Mm. That is why today I will make an example in soccer. Uh, you can be the Messi of this world, the Ronaldo, but you still need a coach. Talent is not enough. You still need um, um, formal education, you know, mm. to take your talent further. Mm. What is your first encounter that you had with someone that made you realize, oh, okay, people know me, I'm famous. And what is fame to you? Well, I still believe I'm not famous. I'm still a simple guy, uh. you know. Um, but um, there was this friend of mine, uh, Lake Peter, Peter Mafora and Dick Ruf, you know, he's the one, you know, who actually gave me an idea that day, hey, Master G, people are talking about you, you know, <laughs> the music that you play and everything, you know, uh. yeah. So, but um, I'll be honest with you, being famous to me is one of those things, you know, mm. it, 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 it doesn't excite me. Mm. But it's nice sometimes when you're walking in a mall or at an airport and people say, hey, DJ Kanyane, you know. Mm. But for, for me, it's just, it's just one of those things. It, it doesn't excite me. Mm. Yes. So now, something that comes along with fame is, um, as you said, a lot of people coming up to you, but as well as social media, people having all sorts of opinions and uh, things like that. How do you deal with that? It's challenging. Um, that is why sometimes, well, not sometimes, in most cases, um, you have to be careful what you say mm -hmm. in social media and everything mm. because of people attack you to understand mm. so uh, being a public figure it's important you know on how you carry yourself um, how you behave mm. uh, what you post you know and what you say for me that is important mm. so people will always say things you will never change how people look at you to understand mm -hmm. even though it is important for you to behave in a certain way to understand but at the end of the day you'll never make everyone happy mm -hmm. so we do find uh, you know those comments those negative comments you know from people and you know now apart from that what other advice do you have for people who want to also go into the field that you're in and find success look not not each and every one of us will be successful in whatever we do the industry that i'm in is not all about fame money or them girls mm. do you understand that's even interesting because yes, most people think that that's what you would think yes and even though we do need money to survive mm. do you understand but for me you need to have the love and passion of what you do mm. in order for you to be successful so that whichever hardly you come through you'll be able to overcome so if you don't have the passion and the love of what you do, the chances are you're going to fail and give up. Mm. So we're sitting here and this is the Black Excellence uh, series. We're doing an interview for that. Now I want to know from you, what to you is Black Excellence? 
for me, black excellence is, is black achievement beyond class, standard, and, 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 and power. Mm. It's as simple as that. So we've come to the end of the interview, and something that I like to do with all my interviews is I've got a bowl here, right? And in this bowl are tongue twisters. And you have 30 seconds to pick one and to read it as fast as you can. I'll try, I'm not good at that. Three, two, one, go. She sells the uh, she yeah. she sells the seashells by the seashore. Oh, faster. She sells the seashells by the seashore. Okay, keep going. You still have forty. She seconds. sells the seashells by the seashore. She sells the seashells by the seashore. There we go. But I feel like that one was too easy. What do you think? No, it was not easy. It was not. You don't want to yeah. try another one. No, no, no. Thanks. <laughs> I think maybe um, Apple or uh, Pop artist will do much better. Yes. <laughs> this is DJ Ganyani, and you are now watching the Black Excellence brought to you by Benita Dani. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, well, um, that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with more videos.